Hello everybody, Reggie Time here and on this video we're going to be reviewing um, a bunch of hands, all hands I've played over 50 big blinds that have been over 50 big blinds total at the end of the pot uh, from my current Twitch stream. I've been playing some 30 nl snap for the last four nights on Twitch from around 11.30 UK time. Please do come along, join the channel, subscribe, get involved in the chat, I'm trying to build a, a nice friendly Twitch community for no other purpose than just trying to friend, trying to build a nice friendly community. Um, and hopefully people can come along, have a chat, discuss poker, discuss all things, um, whatever it is, sport, life, religion, politics, whatever. I don't give a shit. Chat about what you want, anything goes in the chat. It's more about building a community than anything else. Um, these are hands that are played from that. I'm currently doing a, um, a stake thing to try and build up the stream where I've invited a group of people to invest as much as little as thirty dollars, or as much as one hundred and twenty, into into me. We started with a bankroll of six hundred dollars, and we're going to be doing that for fourteen days and dividing the money equally between myself and and those that have invested. So that's why we're doing it. Um, it just gives me motivation to play every day and to to hopefully play my best too. Because I'm um, obviously other people have entrusted the money to me. It's up to me to make sure that I treat that with respect. So yeah, that's what we're doing. On Twitch right now please do come over if you're a youtuber YouTube viewer who isn't aware that I'm also on Twitch you'll find my Twitch stream link below the video please come along give us a follow and try and join us in the live sessions if you can so these are the the 50 uh, the 24 biggest pots I've played so far over four sessions so we start out here and then needless to say when we're playing snap we don't have stats so the stats we're using now, we're going to be possibly looking at some hands with a different point of view to how we did at the time, if we thought players were unknown or not. If I knew anything about the player at the time, I'll mention it. Otherwise, assume unknowns. So this time, we, I, I'm, this time we've called an open from a player under the gun. He's potted it. At the time, I had this guy tagged as a fish. I still think he is quite fishy with these stats, like 33, 26, 3 bet. It's like a 38% C bear and 0% turn barrel. And he, he looks he looks like someone who kind of thinks he has a clue but probably is still a fish. So I'm almost certainly a losing player. So we call because we want to play pots in position against losing players where possible. Another player he calls, he was definitely a fish. We could tell by the stats, but I could tell by the way he was playing too. This guy was definitely like a premium fish. So we flopped two pairs, which is obviously really nice. Two checks to us. Make a very standard bet. I could even go slightly bigger there, I guess, to get paid from some like Ace Queen, King Jack, Ace King, those types of hands. But I think we hear about them certainly if he has them. So I think the size is fine. They called in two spots. Turn what it affected with the nuts. Checks to us again. And I can't remember what size I made here, but look at it now in review against these two fishy players. I'd like to see myself bet somewhere in the region of at least six. I wouldn't want to be less than six. If I bet less than six here, I think I've made a mistake. Yeah, it's definitely a mistake. I guess I was trying to like, give people a really good price to call with draws now, knowing that our hand's pretty much impervious to like jacks or aces coming and things like that. We're still going to have the nuts or the, or the effective nuts. Um, but yeah, I, I think we should bet a little bit bigger there so we can bet bigger on the river. We get called in two spots, which is obviously super sweet. River completes the flush. I think one of these guys has to have a flush to where the hand's played. It's 24 in the pot. Both have 30 ish dollars. What would I like to see myself do? I genuinely don't remember because I haven't, I haven't sorted these hands by pot size. I've just sorted them by date so I'm not like looking back at a hand thinking oh yeah I, this must be a big pot so therefore I must have made this size I'd like to see myself bet minimum 14 here anywhere between 14 and 20 is fine I think just to make sure that flush is cool I mean we could go with an over bet and hope someone's got like a super primo hand but um yeah if it's less than 14 I'm disappointed 15 21 it's on the smaller end of what I'd like to see we get a call and we beat the 8 7. I mean, maybe this guy just calls his entire stack off there, who knows? But 
I think we could have possibly made some more money there. I think if we bet bigger on the turn by even a couple of dollars, it means we can possibly get close to jamming the river. So I think I made a mistake there, mostly on the turn, I think. We bet $2 more on the turn, or even $1.50 more on the turn, and we get two callers. That puts an extra four fifty on the pot on the river. So now we're up to 28 in the pot, and he's going to have like maybe 30. Then we could think about jamming. So I think we made the mistake on the turn there by not upsizing slightly. <coughs> Next hand. And it's Jack suited, limper on the button. Obviously a fish, we isolate. He calls. Flip a good shot, back door flush draw. Seems a good spot to see bet, which we did. He calls. Turn the nuts with the nut redraw. We bet. He jam. Well, fair enough, whatever. Remember this hand now, he's just a cooler for him. But straight over straight, we're always going to win a big pot there, nothing much to see. I remember this hand and I think I made a mistake, I wasn't really concentrating. <clears throat> At this point I think we were chatting about something else in the chat and I didn't concentrate too well. This guy's a <clears throat> pretty bad, loose, aggressive player, not fully stacked. He opens, and I think I made the first mistake I made, he was three betting. Um, I think we should probably just call against this type of player with a hand like this. So I think the three bet's definitely a mistake. Um, not a big mistake, because he can certainly fold a lot of hands at CM when he, it's a super small sample, but he's only 80% from the bun. So I guess he can't be bad, we're going to get some fold equity, I guess. But against these stack sizes and these types of players, we just open ourselves up to him jamming on us too often, which is going to suck because we're going to have to fold. So I'm not sure I love the three bet here, but anyway, we made it. Um, I guess we have to see about this. Yeah, we see about small. He calls. And turn a flush draw. He checks. We have like a pot size bet left, just about. Um, and yeah, I guess we need to jam here, do we? We uh, we could maybe check. I mean, I don't suppose he has too much king X in his range. I think a lot of king X would just check ways to flop these types of like bad aggressive players. I don't think they have the discipline to like check call here with just a king very often. That's my read on these types of players anyway. Obviously everyone's different. But if we had like a like a king queen or a king jack type hand, I'd expect him to check ways to flop at least some of the time. So maybe he has like, I don't know, just jack X or some some uh, the occasional random float because we're a bit small. So I did decide to stick him in. Uh, he called we didn't get there and he had jack seven so I guess if he doesn't hit the seven on the turn and this is the seven is a six of clubs instead I guess our our jam's gonna work a decent amount and sadly he turned the two pairs not much we can do about that but I think the mistake in that hand was three bet in this hand pre-flop against somebody with like just 50 big blinds who's aggressive I think again three bet in this against some more passive players who call a lot of three bets, it might be better, but or unfold a lot, but not against someone as active as him. I think the, th the pre flop three bets are unnecessary. Next three diamonds, we open up a small raise. We get three bet by. Uh, I didn't know this guy at all at the time. Um, do we have to treat him as a complete unknown? Had I known, he was like so aggressive, like 22 21 with a 10% three bet, which means he just almost never flats. He's just typically playing three bet or full pre flop. Um, I guess we could have four bet bluff with this hand actually I think I wouldn't mind seeing with I don't think I do four bet bluff here but I think now I know the stat to this dude I think four bet bluffing is a decent option here but we didn't we just called because we didn't know the stats on him we flop a gut shot straight flush draw you see bets and this is uh, this is something I've changed to my game recently for a long time I was just calling in these situations um, but nut flush draws and gut shots and things and using some of my like weaker flush draws to maybe bluff with maybe if I'd had like five six of diamonds here or something like that um, but I've started like raising my nut flush draws lately and it's been working really well I stopped doing it last year when I read Doug Polk's like 20 ways to play flush draws in 2017 and he suggested just like calling with your nut flush draws and raising with your like draws that have less showdown value um, which I think is good advice, I think it's nothing wrong with doing that, but I also think racing with nut flush draws is just, um, it's pretty damn good too, it's hard to misplay these sort of spots anyway isn't it, um, I did elect to raise, he jammed, we have like, the super trivial call, 
and we bink the straight flush on the turn, which is nice. And we sucked out on kings. But I mean, once we get to that flop in a three bet pot where we have like a good shot straight flush draw, I think the hand plays itself. We can't fold pre. I think it's just a matter of do we just call flop and then play some turns or do we just raise the flop and get it in? I elected to raise and get it in. And um, yeah, worked out well this time. Kings, me open. Fishy player calls. Flop the other pair. See bet. Fishy player check raises us. Um, again, see these types of players. I think they can absolutely just be like check raising with. They don't have to have sets. Let's put it that way. There's not many two pairs out there. They don't have to have sets. I'd rather not have the king of diamonds, I guess, because we block some of his bluffs. But nevertheless, I think we can go two ways here. We can either call and just like not fold to any turn. Or we can just go for getting in now. And I think I'd probably, I don't know what I did. I don't remember the hand at all. I think I'd prefer to see myself just jam here though. We, well, no, we just called. Queen turn, he checks. Now we should just start piling money in. And he check raises us. So he's gone for the double check raise. Double check raise, almost never a bluff. Uh, but at this point, we're just like way too committed to the hand. We just need to call, I guess. And he just had Jack 10, which is happy days for us. I mean, his line's clearly insane, but um, we'll take it. Usually, like with someone double check raises, you'd expect them to turn up with better than second pair. But clearly, Shabalau doesn't subscribe to that theory. He's too suited, limped pot. Ah, I remember this on pretty well. Uh, this guy is a player who's well known to me. We know each other. Uh, we chat on Facebook, Skype a little bit. Um, he's actually one of the investors, which is a bit bonkers, um, playing in the same pool as us, but there's absolutely nothing, no funny business going on, we just play straight up against each other, and um, we don't chat, I never have Skype open when I'm playing, so there's like no communication between us, we just play against each other and that's that. I elected to go with the 4-bet bluff here, thinking that he was possibly just trying to isolate a fish, lightly. He called, which is disappointing, because obviously we prefer to take it down pre. We get a pretty shit flop. Alright, let's just get and give up. I mean, I guess we could try and see better here, but these sort of boards, I don't expect to get a lot of folds from a lot of his flying range here, which will include like pocket tens, pocket nines, pocket jacks. You know, like suited connected, like jack queen suit is definitely in there. Ten nine suited, jack ten suited. I just don't expect to get a ton of folds. So at this point, I'm just giving up with the hand. Uh, we took our shot pre flop, we've missed. We've got um, a, a board that hits our range pretty well, but I think it also hits our opponent's range pretty well too. And um, yeah, we just have like no pair, no draw, so I'm, I'm willing to give up in these spots. But Paul checked back. Then we hit a deuce on the turn, which I think now get puts us ahead of like ace jack, ace queen, you know, some of the other cans that might flat, you know, like some like eight, seven suited, those types of things. Let me check again. Paul bets around half pot and at this point I think my, my line is so weak I think he can definitely just be like bluffing here and non zero percent of the time so I elected to call with my deuce and the river is like the five of spades which is a, a brick given the hands are kind of hands that I put in well except spade draws of course spade draws have got there now uh, but still ace jack isn't there ace queen isn't there like eight seven is not there um, things like that so it's not an ideal situation I think this is possibly one of the worst played hands I've had so far during the time doing it we check and Paul bets like super small and he knows that I do this kind of thing uh, like I bet small on rivers just to try and make people fold like slightly better hands that, that, than like we've got so for example I would bet small this year if I had an ace jacket and ace queen because we know we're not going to get a king to fold we're not trying to get a king to fold but we're trying to get someone off ex so like exactly ace two or pocket eight so ace queen and things and i kind of level myself into thinking well at this price i just have to call, call. so, so I, I did and paul ace king, king which was disappointing pleasing for him disappointing for us that, that i wasn't, wasn't pleased how i played that hand i think the reasoning is fine but i just don't maybe he doesn't have enough plus especially, especially when he uses that size two queens we open we get three bet by um a maniac well his stats aren't actually as manic as I thought they were. I mean, I remember this guy playing a while back and he was way more manic than this. Maybe he just toned it down a little bit, I'm not sure. But still, nevertheless, he's like a really, like, 
a loose bad aggressive player. Certainly like one of the fish in these games. And then we've got Eggy, who's also like a major, major fish. He calls two. We put the four but in. Super happy to stack up three versus either of these guys with queens. That like way ahead of their ages. Um, and the fourth call, which is pretty funny. We're left with like less than a pot size bet. And this egg is like, he's, he's weird. Yeah, I was I saying, like, just donk out with like middle pairs, bottom pairs, all kinds of things. Um, and he just donk it. And we're not in love with it, not by a long, long, long way. But he doesn't have to have King X to do this or like sets of three, sets of fours. I mean, this guy can just have a pocket 10 to be doing this. He can have a base 10 to be doing this. He's just weird. He's, he's, he's like, not a good player. Um, so I didn't really know what to do here. I thought, should we jam? Should we fold? Should we call? And I elected to just call and just that like, call in turn. And uh, three's a pretty good card for us. He bets nine. And just stick the rest in now because we've only got like four dollars 36 left. So we stick the rest in. He calls. And he turns up with the S King and he drags down a big pot from us. Um, I had a hard time. I remember talking about it at the time. And I thought S King definitely four bets pre with this guy. I mean, he's got a 10% three bet. He's pretty loose aggressive. So I, I ruled out S King for him doing this, really. Ruled out King Queen because we have all the queens. So that really, he's got like, in my opinion, his value hands are going to be like King Jack, King 10 suited, maybe stuff like that. But an awful lot of nonsense. That's what I was thinking. He didn't have the nonsense this time. He had the Ace King, which I'd pretty much ruled out due to how pre flop went. I um, mean, he, he didn't squeeze pre, he didn't, so he didn't call 4-bet pre. When we 4-bet, he didn't jam. And I, I thought this dude would be doing that with the S-King pretty much close to 100% of the time. I was clearly wrong. Um, never mind, I guess. We have two tens. we open. We get 3-bet by very loose aggressive player, 27-22, with a high 3-bet over a small sample size. We can't take much into the 3-bet stat here. But 27-22, he's going to be someone who's like pretty aggro. Again, at the time, this guy, I don't recognise the name even now. So it's clearly someone I had no reads on. We've only got 71 hands on him. Um, I had no reads on him whatsoever. So we called with the tens. You know, uh, kind of moderate flop. We can't fold just yet. We bink the turn. He bets. Um, I think we just call again here. I don't know what I did. Don't remember the hand at all. I think we just call again here and look to just jam the river. Ace comes on the river. He bets. And then we're behind to like aces, ace, king, etc. But I still think we need to jam here. I'm not sure what I did. I wouldn't be surprised if we just called, thinking, well, what worse can call? But king, queen can call. Pocket nines can call. It's a bit thin jamming, I think. I genuinely don't remember what I did. So let me think what I'd like to see myself do now. I don't hate the call actually, just call because it's like king, literally. I think king queen, maybe if it's terrible, ace queen. But I think I just prefer calling actually. And I did just call, and he did have to like the one hand that we probably could have got maximum value from. Um, but yeah, it's okay playing the hand afterwards, saying oh we should have jammed there. It's like what worse is going to call? It's literally this like king queen of clubs, king queen of hearts. Probably the only two hands that can call. So I don't hate the just call there. Two kings. We get three bet by someone who's probably going to be a fish, but we are starting the hand somewhat deeper than usual. But we do go with the four bet. He calls. We went for a big four bet too, didn't we? Pretty big four bet. He calls us. Really good board. We see bet. He goes all in. We got his pretty standard one. Whatever the result is here, it's standard. He just has queens. It's standard from my point of view anyway, not seeing standard from his, but my point of view, not much to see there really. We overlimp with the pocket fours. A pretty loose aggressive player. Isolates pretty big. Um I mean I could just fall pre here I guess, but I just guess to put six blinds in pre, but I mean I think that'd be way too nitty once we overlimp, so we call, we hope to flop the set, which I'm presuming we do give him reviewing it. He bets pretty small. I'd like to see me raise here versus this sizing. Um, 
if he'd bet bigger, if he'd bet somewhere in the region of like 280 or more, I think calling would be better. But versus this size, I think we should raise. Ooh, I just call it all like that. Checks the turn. We bet pretty big. I don't like my sizing here either, really, because I don't think he has too much ace X that bets smaller than checks this turn. I mean, maybe he does, but he doesn't. He doesn't look super strong right now, so I think my bet's too big there, really. I don't like it. I mean, it's clearly going to work out okay because we wouldn't review in the hand if it wasn't a big pot. But overall, I think when he just like C bets like smaller than his original raise on ace high and then checks the turn, most of the time I think he's just going to be in a check fold line here, so I don't like my sizing. We should bet smaller just to put him in some tougher spots with some of his weaker hands. But he calls anyway, then river breaks off, he checks again. Um, I think I'd like to see it. again. Sometimes I won't mind going for the overbet jam here, try to rep spades, but I just don't think our opponent has been much. I'd like to see myself bet like one third pot here, something like anywhere between like five and six dollars. Do I go with? Oh, I decided to go for the lot. An opponent calls. If pocket tens, so our read was right there. And um, God knows what the fuck he's doing, calling. Guess he just puts on spades and went for it. Because uh, we read right, he, d he does have a pretty weak hand, and even though we got paid the maximum there, I think overall versus that line from from this type of player, I think betting smaller on the river might be better. But clearly we were on a roll, and we decided to go for the maximum. Everything pretty standard so far. We bet on the turn. He check raises us. So now we have the overpair with the second not flush draw against someone who isn't fully stacked and who is on the loose side. Um, because against some players here, if we were up against, say, this 19 slash 9 guy or this 21 12 guy, I think we can maybe consider folding when we get check raised on the turn or just calling, hoping to hit a diamond. Um, I think I'd prefer to see myself just jam here. And just get it in. Yeah, we're going to get it in versus flushes and things. But he might also just have like ace 10 with the ace of diamonds, king 10, king of diamonds, that type of hand. I elected to just call. And he jams. I mean, we can't fold anyway, so I'm not sure why I didn't just jam the turn there. I think it's a mistake. And um, we're up against the king nine. Yeah, so I don't play that hand badly, but just jam the fucking turn. Reg, there's only six dollars left. Just jam the turn and get on with it. We isolate. Pretty weak player with Ace King. We flop nothing. We check back. I think we could see bet there. Two over cards. Back door straight door. Back door not flush draw. I think I should probably see bet there. I think it's a mistake to check. Um, we just get into fold some random stuff that has some equity. We get to start building a pot in case we hit some good turns. We can barrel like any green card on the turn. Any ten queen, king or ace. Yeah, I think that should be a see bet. It's a mistake not see bet in there. Turn a flush draw, he bets we did. Then he like to raise. <laughs> I think just calling would have been okay there too. I mean, raising can't be bad. We have two overs and a flush draw still, but if he jams here, he puts us in a dicey spot, doesn't it? Where we have to fold a shit ton of equity. So I think I prefer maybe just calling there actually. He does call, but because we're running pure, we river the nuts and he just jams into us. We call and Here's the queen three, which is nice. We three bet queens versus a regular. I didn't know he's a regular. Don't really know much about this guy. I don't recognize his name. So we've obviously just played a bunch of hands against him in one session. I would say. Mm, flop top set. This one's going to be interesting, isn't it? We bet. He calls. Still got the nuts. We bet. He calls. Still got the virtual nuts. I guess like nine, seven, and seven, five. I've got there, but if he's got them, then hallelujah. He leads out. We jam, I guess. Yeah, we jam. He, he just falls. So God knows what the fuck he's like taking that line with that wants to bet fold that river. I guess the hands like King Jack, maybe. Um, yeah, not sure what he was doing there, but we'll take it. Three bet the nines versus someone who was, to be fair, completely unknown to me. 22.17, not fully stacked. Typical of the type of like bad reg, fishy type, fishy type regulars you see on this site where they have, they have reasonable stats but they don't reload and then they're a bit goofy post flop. So we three bet the nines, not usual for me, quite often I'll just peel the nines there. Um, 
don't know why I chose the three bet this time, it just seemed a bit random. But we did it. Probably just three bet because he was unknown and he didn't have a full stack. I'd guess that's the most likely reason. Just to isolate him, try and get heads up in position. Anyway, we flop on the full house. Check bet call. Still at the full house, of course. Check bet all in um, and just call. I mean, this ways we'll beat here, I guess. 10 jack seems the most obvious one. 10 9. But yeah, I mean, we're just obviously we're loving it. We call it off and we cool at the guy. Good for us. Two kings. We open, we get three bet by um, a friend of the stream. I'm not sure at the time if I knew him or not. Uh, my impressions of him, and we've had discussions in the chat, is that I think he's way too loose aggressive um, for these games. I don't think you need to be playing 33 27 with an 18 3 bet in these games. And he really is this laggy. It's, given the discussions we've had, it's just his strategy, it's his philosophy. Um, we've had some friendly chats about how. I disagree with this. I this strategy is the best for these games, but you know, everyone plays their own way. So I just like to call versus this guy because he can have like tons and tons of air in his range that we don't want him to fold. Um, get a pretty good flop. He bets. I decide to race straight away, just fast play my hand. Um, thinking that he might think I'm full of shit and like come over the top with some weaker holdings from time to time, I guess, which he did. At this point, I just call to allow him to just jam turns. Which he duly obliges with. We call. And he just had like a complete bluff. So I mean I think his his three bet pre is probably okay. His C bet's uh, kinda of meh. When we raise it's obviously his three bet's complete spew and his jam's complete spew too. Um and I don't want to upset this guy or offend him because he is he seems like a nice guy in the stream. But this is a sort of mistake I see a lot of these like super laggy guys making. They just kind of want to try and run over everybody, run over the table. He's openly admitted he doesn't care about the money. I think he's probably quite a wealthy guy because he's played much higher stakes. He doesn't care about the money. He just wants to play for fun. Um, and fair play to him for that. But I think he's definitely going to be making a lot of big mistakes against me if this is going to be his strategy against me. He'll probably adjust at some point, I would imagine. He seems like an intelligent guy, just someone who doesn't give a fuck much. Um, open limper 87 1 happy days when these guys exist 4x he calls we see bet jack eye board which I think is fine against like super loose passive guys for value continue value bet in turn and I think it's too late for value on this river now I don't think we can we can bet Are you <coughs> excuse me <coughs> bloody hell sorry about that I think this is just going to be a check call versus his like missed draws and things. If your bet's too big, just to check fold, I guess. Um, I think I should probably fold here. I mean, obviously I don't because we wouldn't be looking at the hand, but I think against this sizing, I maybe mean, we don't hold it. Uh, we don't block too many missed draws. I mean, obviously I've called. Don't know the result of the hand. 3-6 so he's rivered the nuts yeah I think that should just be a check fold to be fair I mean if, if he bets small like $5 $4 $6 maybe even we can think about it but when he when these like when most people pot it on the river in these games it's the bluffs are pretty damn infrequent I mean when someone pots it on the river and what else do we need here to call we need to be bluffing 33% in these games <coughs> we can definitely and, and should absolutely be overfolding versus pot size river bets because I just don't think people are bluffing anywhere near 33% of the time when they pot it. Um, not even close. I think they're just going to be like really, really value heavy. And I think they should just be a fold. I think I made a mistake here by calling this sizing. And we duly got our ass handed to us. Three bet the... I remember this Joey the lips. I was under the impression he was like pretty loose aggressive. I mean he is pretty loose aggressive, 27-21, but I thought he was more loose aggressive than this. We three bet him, he calls, well everyone calls. We get a reasonable flop, we bet. He calls. Bet call. And the question is do we jam this river? We're 41 blinds deep. What size do we use this river? It's a dicey spot, you know, if we go for a small bet like $10 or something, it opens up the chance for him to just fucking jam it in our eye and make us fold everything that pretty much isn't a set or jack 10. 
Um, what would I like to see myself do here? I do not remember this hand at all. Um, I mean, this pot's plenty big, isn't it? I guess I don't mind just wimping out here and checking back, I guess. I mean, against some, like, more dorsal, but against a 26-11 um, or a complete fish, I think we can get away with just, like, betting, like, one quarter pot here, one third pot, anything between, like, eight and 11. But I think against these aggressive guys, if we do that, it's like waving a red rag at them sometimes, and they just might just fucking spew and just, like, jam some worse hands, some bluffs or whatever. So if he's got, like, pocket jacks or something, might just turn that into a bluff. Doubt it, but you never know. I think I prefer just wimping out here and checking back, which is what I do. Um, maybe he would have called like eight dollars with queen ten. Who knows? But yeah, I don't hear that. Some of you guys will be screaming, "Oh, you have to bet!" But I mean, we're so deep still, and we just allow ourselves to get so out. Play. We can't bet massive because we only have one pair, and um, he probably can't call with worse versus the big sizing. If we bet small, we sometimes induce some of these super aggro guys to do crazy things. So I think just taking like the pragmatic option there and checking back, saying this pot's big enough for our hand. You know, it's a hundred big blind pot, we only have like top pair. I think that's fine. Two queens here, we open. We get three bet by somebody again who is pretty much unknown to me. I don't recognise the name at all. Um, we call. He bets, we call. He bets, we call. He jams. He jams, right, now what do we do? I remember this hand now, now we think about it. My logic at the time was, I don't think he jams here with like kings, aces, etc. And he doesn't probably have that much 9x in his, in his preflop 3 betting range. So I remember I tanked over this for quite a while. I was like really close to folding. But then I just kind of thought, well, no, he doesn't have aces, kings. He doesn't really have any sets. Jacks is like the only set he can have. And even then, does he want to jam it on like a board where you only need a four or a nine to have him beat? And in the end, I just kind of came down. He's going to have some bluffs in his range here. Um, I don't love it by any stretch of the imagination. But um, I just think, like, what's he jamming the river with? I mean, he's, he's, if he's got like an ace nine or a ten nine or something like that, then more power to him. He's just going to felt me. But I think in these spots, some of these like more loose aggressive players do have some bluffs. I don't love it because we just talked earlier about not wanting to call pot size bets on the river with just bluff catchers. But this is a pretty unique situation in that I don't think he does this with like pocket aces, pocket kings, which is what he was representing on the flop and on the turn and pre-flop. So all of a sudden, if he's like representing the big over pairs pre-flop. I don't think he does it on the river with them, and eventually I kind of made a really sad call, and we managed to pick off a bluff, which is nice. Next in suited, multi way, we flop a flush draw, back door, straight draw, two overs. Overcast probably aren't worth too much if a lot of money goes in. We decide to raise here when, like, a fishy player puts out a really, like, well, not a really small, but a smallish donk bet, and the preflop raiser just calls. I think um, calling or raising is fine, but I've been playing my draws much more aggressively recently. And it's been, as I said earlier, it's been working out well, playing my draws more aggressively. Um, we get a cold call from somebody, which isn't too exciting. We're not exactly ecstatic with the situation, but we do turn a flush. He checks. Right, why have I checked back there? I guess I'm just trying to pot control against bigger flushes, maybe, or just like what can he call with if he doesn't have a flush? Um, yeah, but I think we should definitely put a bet out there of like anything between six to six to anything between six and twelve. I think would be fine. So I don't love my check back. He bets the river, and he said to just call. I think I've been a bit weak here. I think we could have bet the turn and we could have raised this river. Yeah, I don't like it. I think if we're going to check back this turn, we need to probably raise this river and get it in. Um, but again, we've still got thirty a bl 100 blinds behind. So maybe I need to work a little bit on my like, deep stack game. Because the second time now where we've kind of taken a passive-ish line on a river, when there's like lots of money still to play for. Um, again, I don't hate it, because if we do raise if we do jam, like what worse hands are going to call? Sets are probably going to call for sure. Um, yeah, 
I think we should probably raise there. I think of Russell winning the table probably. Yeah, and he's going to call with sixes. So yeah, I think um, we could have won a lot bigger pot there and probably should have. We should definitely have bet the turn. And then I think on the river, he probably checks to us again and we can then just bet again. Yeah, so there definitely, I think my mistake there is checking back the turn. I guess I know why I've done it because if we get check raised, it's kind of sick. But I mean, if we're going to lose with a flush and we're going to lose like a, how many big blinds deep would we to start the hand? And if we're going to lose 150 big blind pot, then sorry, 300 big blind pot, then we're just going to lose one. You know, I think I've been a little bit weak there. There's the ace queen, get three bet. Call. This is an unknown. We flop top pair. Check bet call. This all seems pretty standard. Check bet call. Check bet. Uh, we can't really fall, can we? Call. And he just has some random pocket eights. Yeah, that's very standard, that one. Two kings. I just flat versus. Aha! I flat versus this guy because he falls to a lot of three bets. Um, so I decided to just flat. I'm not saying it's a necessarily great play. Perhaps I should just three bet. But anyways, we managed to induce someone to squeeze. So then I put the small back raise in, which I really quite like. He calls. And then yeah, he just goes in, in and he has, has an iron jack. jack. So I mean, I like, I like his squeeze. squeeze. I think his squeeze is fine. When we fall, but I think he should probably just fall. And then he's obviously. Overplay his hand on the flop, in my opinion. Queen 10, we just flat. Flopped up here. What the fuck am I doing here? What in God's earth? Ah, right, this is when... I didn't realise this was like... Before I knew much about this, Nax. It turns out it's like place 6 tables, it's place 30 and 50 in my opinion, is a pretty decent player. This is fucking horrible. This is such pure spew. I guess I just... At the time, I thought it was more aggressive than it was, but... Oh, I've got two pairs, ignore me. For some reason, I thought we just had one pair. Um, so, ignore all I said. And I don't hate the race here. Um, in fact, I don't hate it at all. I think it's probably okay. If you a flush, then good for him. But we can certainly get value from like worse hands. So, no, ignore it. It's not spew. For some reason, I thought we just had one pair. Um, let me go up the check raise. He jams. We call. And we got value from the ace queen. But yeah, the, um, yeah ignore the fact I said that was spew. didn't know if we had two pairs. But yeah, everything I said about this guy was right. I think he's a pretty solid player, pretty decent player. Not someone who want to play him with <coughs> two hands to go he yeah, opened the kings we get three bet by a tall knit I didn't know it was a tall knit at the time um, we go with the big four bet he folds and then some more back raise jams on us we call and yes queens yeah, this guy really is that tight I've got over a thousand hands on him now he's like nine slash eight bonkers but there we go Last time we finish on aces, we open and get three bet by. Oh, this is, yeah, this hand's, this this hand's interesting. interesting. <coughs> Sorry for coughing so much. I had this guy tagged as a fish. I mean, he is a fish, he's playing 17 now, he's just a tight fish. But I remember from our following days years ago, and he was like 36 slash fucking five or something back in the day. So he's obviously tightened up and got a little bit better, but he's still not good. So he tagged as a fish, we went with a big four bet. Obviously, really happy in the situation. He calls. Pretty decent flop for us. He checks. We bet. He calls. Decent turn, in my opinion. He checks. We just go all in. I um, mean, yeah, he can have some like sets and straights and things, I guess. But I mean, 17 slash 9, 3 betting pre flop. This board, all low cards. It, yeah, I'm just value jamming here against jacks, queens, kings, tens, nines, all those things. Um, and, and I was, was just, just like really comfortable with the situation he calls and I'm like oh cool right he's got queens or something and he turned up with three new suited uh, I think my jam there on the turn is completely fine against this player he just should just should almost never have that god knows why he's done it it's clearly not in his 
in his like to do he doesn't do it all the time you know you can't be 17 9 with a 2.6 but and, he, and even though it's only a small sample this three but will be super low he's obviously just doing something random here i mean you just can't put the three do suit in his range um yeah the turn jam might look spewy on like a four five six seven board but i just put this guy squarely on all the pairs and just that jammed for value and he yeah, turned up with the three deuce whatever so yeah um that's all the hands we played so far that are over 50 big blinds <clears throat> probably going to come back and do another one of these on friday at the end of the week and this is how it's been going so far we are 267 dollars up in just six thousand hands winning at 13 bigs ev nine bigs on nearly t as good as 10 bigs it's going really really well so far i mean super small sample size not going to pretend we're crushing it or anything like that because i mean the sample size is ridiculous but everything's looking really good um please do come along and join the stream i'll be streaming again tonight from assuming that you're watching the video on the day it's produced from probably around 11 p.m 11 30 p.m uk time and i'll be doing that most nights i'll be taking the occasional night off i haven't scheduled any night offs in maybe we'll take next sunday off because last night was pretty bad um, even though we made money the, the pools weren't great so we'll take the odd night off but most nights if you come and tune in around 11 30 uk time you're going to catch me on and just come and get involved in the chat ask me anything about poker or anything you know anything goes in the chat like i said and um, please just come find the channel give us a follow and get involved thanks for watching everybody and bye bye for now